Hello again, everybody, and welcome to The Cardinal's Nest here on HBC TV 25. I am not Dean Beckman or Donnie Netto. I'm Justin Barriento. St. Mary's University is on spring break this week, so most of the student athletes are on break as well. Of course, not the uh, athletes that are in playoff competition. That would be the St. Mary's women's basketball team and the St. Mary's women's hockey team. They are still working hard and getting ready for their playoff games this week. So on Cardinals Nest this week, we are going to look back at some of our favorite moments from the winter season, and we'll start things off with this report from HBC's Nathan Bowler. I had the opportunity to interview Michaela Meredith, who's a senior guard from Bloomington, Minnesota. Not only about her expectations for the upcoming season, but her experience being a basketball player right here at SMU. I decided to come to St. Mary's for the campus. It's really beautiful and um, I got recruited here for basketball, so that was a major part in why I came to visit. And on my tour, just I love the people and everyone's really friendly. I really like the coaches. That was a big part and I don't know, sim like the same size as high school. I didn't want to go to a big school and a good distance from home. Do you know much about Coach Polari entering this season? New coach, it's coming in different, but I think we can start where we left off and work from there. Him coming in, we didn't really know much. We met with him before the coach, he was decided. Didn't really know much, we knew where he coached and a little bit of that, but other than that, he came in fresh. How much work does the team do during the off season? Preseason, we did four times a week where we would do running and conditioning and agility and stuff, and then we'd lift after. So that was four times a week, pretty much all school year. And then summer, we have a workout that we also do. Every year we scrimmage Luther, goes every other, so we were there last year and they're coming here this year for our first home game kind of, I okay. guess. But so it's just kind of every year, just kind of see where we're at with practices and like put everything together. Mm -hmm. So why are you studying criminal justice? In high school, Criminal Minds, the TV okay. shows, we watched it a lot in one of my classes, a criminal justice class. And I always really liked it, it just caught my eye and it's really interesting to me. I came and I've switched my major twice. I mean, I knew I always wanted to do it, but I just kind of, sidetracked and then got back to it. Yeah. I think all of us starting out freshman year were kind of came in, didn't really know anyone, didn't sure. know what to expect and now it's we've been here for three years and kind of know how to run things. I mean we want to be just as successful if not more. I don't know, as upperclassmen just try to be leaders, try to set an example and give 110 percent in practice so everyone else follows. Keep the program going I guess. Any team, you want to make it as far as you can. and yeah. I mean, that's for sure a goal, making it to the national tournament. We did my sophomore okay. year, and it was oh. awesome. So I think if we could make it again, it would be awesome. Cool. For right now, it's just one day at a time. Sure. Keep getting better. Keep putting all, like, all our whole offense together. And What have you enjoyed the most during your time here at SMU? Probably basketball. Yeah. My best friends are on the team, like always practicing all year round. We do preseason and postseason stuff, so I'm always with them. Always get along with them. Even outside basketball, we're always hanging out. So it's pretty much all about basketball. Michaela wants to relive what's happened two years ago when the Cardinals made a run into the NCAA tournament. And with the new head coach who's had experience coaching in all three divisions, I'd say she's gonna have a senior year she won't soon forget. This has been Nathan Fuller reporting for the Cardinals Nest. Want the latest news on St. Mary's University athletics? Watch the Cardinals Nest on HBC TV 25. Dean Beckman and SMU Sports Information Director Donnie Netto will talk about the past week in Cardinal Athletics, highlighting the best in each Cardinal sports team. Player and coach guests will add their stories and insight each week with new shows Thursdays at 5 p.m. and replays Fridays at 6.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 7.30 a.m. on HBC TV 25. We chose HBC because they're a local company. They have a big audience in Winona, which is the geographic group that we're looking for. Mel is very easy to work with. She's genuinely concerned about how our money is being spent, and she does everything she can to make sure we get the most for our money. She takes care of us, so whenever there's a problem, which is rarely, I know that I can go to her and she's gonna take care of it. To see how HBC Advertising can help your company, call Melanie at 507-474-5802. More women's basketball, we welcome in Brent Polleri. Brent is uh, the new head women's basketball coach for St. Mary's University. So Dean Beckman here, Donnie Netto, and uh, Brent, welcome to the Cardinals Nest. Thanks for being on the show today. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. So first time on the Cardinals Nest, why don't you give our viewers a little bit of an overview of your coaching career and, and, and how you landed and ended up at St. Mary's. Okay, um, I started off coaching both 
girls and boys high school basketball. Uh, one of my first jobs then was at Montana State, um, Division One. so I kind of went the backwards way of going <laughs> things. I started pretty much D1, then I was the head high school coach for a couple of years in Montana. Um, came to Northern State University, mm -hmm. um, ended up being there for about eight years. Uh, was at Texas A&M Kingsville for a year mm -hmm. and at the University of North Dakota for a year and then last from Minnesota State Mankato. All right, good. So probably nice for you to have put some roots down now, yes. right? Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and I'm sure when you're out looking at different head coaching possibilities, oftentimes you're looking at rebuilding a program. But obviously that's not the case here as Mandy left things in good shape. So I'm sure that was part of the attraction of the St. Mary's. Position. It definitely was. I wanted to be somewhere where I enjoyed living, somewhere that had a chance to win the league mm -hmm. and just be around good people. And that was kind of the three factors sure. all came together. You know, Coach, I mentioned in the first segment, uh, you guys started practice about a month ago. And as you mentioned, we've had a scrimmage and an exhibition game. The ladies have to be chomping at the bit to actually get things rolling. How has, uh, how has the month been and how important are these two games this weekend uh, up in St. Joseph? I, the month has been good. I love our team. Um, just how much we're building and how rapidly they're learning and eager they are to learn um, is something that I've really liked. Uh, you know, we have had a month of practice, but we also had two players that have only had four days of practice. We've had <laughs> a couple other players that just had a couple more practices of that. So we really, in the beginning, were just trying to learn who we were, and we're still kind of coming together as a, as a group. You know, it's an interesting dynamic or an interesting learning experience in that you've got to learn about the players, and, and in, in turn, the players have to learn about you and about your style. How has that uh, learning curve been going? It's going good, and that's you got to develop trust in each other. Um, it's something new. I think change is, people usually just don't love change, especially when you're successful, but they're buying into it and seeing how we're doing against our scrimmage and in our exhibition, I think people are buying in more and more and we're making good progress. And you had mentioned too, some players just having minimal practice. A couple of those players, that's because they're dual sport athletes yep. <laughs> with Brandy Blattner and Emma Schaefer both playing volleyball. So their season was just concluding and you had several practices under your belt already. At yep. the same time, I'm sure as a head coach, you're happy that they get to have that experience of, of being in two sports and you can uh, be pretty assured you're getting a good athlete when they do show up. Exactly, and both those two are phenomenal athletes. Um, and just, they're coming in, picking up stuff. I told them it's kind of like a Spanish immersion school where we're not gonna start from the beginning. You gotta kind of learn from where we are now, and that's right. kind of where we're at. You know, Emma played so well last year when Bridget Pefke went down. Now Bridget's healthy again, back for St. Mary's. Um, how did you handle that situation going into the year because they're both such terrific players? Yeah, you know, it's it's fun to have them be able to play together. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have whenever one of them's on the court and the other one's out, you don't miss a beat. Right, um, right. It's just, it's a good, I think we're pretty deep. We're a lot deeper and I think better than we've been picked in our league. Okay. You know, Coach, three three seniors on the squad, you know, in, uh, in Bridget and Haley and Michaela mm -hmm. and a number of freshmen. So you've got the... A, good mix, how have the upperclassmen been in terms of kind of bringing in the, the newcomers and kind of welcoming them in and maybe leading them uh, hopefully by example? Yeah. They've been awesome. Uh, you know, there was a vacuum from before somebody got hired where they were here without a head coach and those seniors stepped up and they really did a good job of bringing people together. They're talking about how tight our team is and a lot of that is due to our seniors. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about this weekend. Um, as, as I mentioned, you. you officially kick off play uh, up at St. Benedict. You've got Crown on Saturday and then St. Ben's on, on Sunday. Uh, aside from the stock answer of two wins, what do you want to get out of this weekend? Uh, just We want to see ourselves just keep getting better. I mean, that's our, our whole goal. We're into the whole John Wooden saying of, you just want to be the best that we can be, and that's it. I, whatever the results are, that will come. And But we just want to keep growing, keep getting better as we go. And, uh, you know, I think both games will give us uh, chance to see that. You had the first exhibition game in sort of preparation for this upcoming weekend. It was against Winona State right here on HBC. And wow, that first half, you had to be thrilled with what took place because we know Winona State, a ranked Division II opponent, and uh, this was an exhibition game for your team, Division Three school, yet it was a three-point game at halftime. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not because Winona State 
played poorly. It was because you guys played that well. They played very well in the first half, yeah. and, and your team shot really well, especially from the outside. Your thoughts on, on how that exhibition went? Yeah, you know, we were pleased with how it went. Um, they shot, I think, in the first half from the three-point line, 60%, right. and we shot 64%, yeah. <laughs> so that's a pretty good um, shooting. But, you know, I didn't, we tried to come out in the zone and slow things down. I think we got down about 16 points right away, so that might not have been the best thing. <laughs> wow. But we made adjustments and, and got back up to them, and they're just that's a good team, well-coached team. Coach Ballard does a good job, and like I said before, they're one of the better teams I've seen him have. Right. Coach, can you talk? We talked a little bit last week when we had Coach Rustoven on about the rule changes, and really a lot of them affect the women's game, especially the switch to quarters. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, what that's how that's been going? Because it's still hard for me to comprehend the, the whole quarter situation compared to the playing of two halves. So, and we're learning as this is going here, um, but so in each quarter you get five team fouls, the, or the four, the fifth one is two free throws, no more bonus in the women's game. So what we're learning is some of these quarters, teams are getting that fifth foul with six, seven, eight minutes left in the quarter. Mm -hmm. We're gonna probably have to adjust what kind of defenses we're playing, try to slow the game down a little bit, because you'll have quarters of I know in our scrimmage we gave up 33 points in one quarter. Now we scored 28, I think. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, if you get into foul trouble early, that's probably the biggest um, difference. Right. Does it does it affect? Does it change? Aside from the fouls, does it change the coaching strategy at all? I know the timeouts are different. The quarters are 10 minutes. You don't have a 20 minute half. Um, talk a little bit more about uh, you know just the whole adjustment to a, to playing quarters rather than two halves. It's really not that much different. Besides having, we can kind of have little mini games. You know, first mm -hmm. game, second game, third game, and try to win each game um, there. But besides that, it's not much different. Does, does it impact substitution patterns yep. at all? I mean, we can slow down stuff a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We can or speed it up if we want. But yeah, it does. It slows the game down a little bit. Right. Um, it talks about a little bit some of the individual players. I know uh, one of the freshmen, Brandy Blattner, really stood out in that Winona State game, just her athleticism, yep. her ability to rebound and then transition with the dribble herself after the rebound and the speed with which she's able to do it. Yep. Really impressive. Yeah, she, you know, she's a phenomenal athlete, but she plays hard and she's got a knack of where that ball is going. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons she's such a good rebounder. Um, She's still learning, you know, she missed our whole preseason and this is her first college year. And so she's learning a lot of the fundamentals and positioning and that kind of stuff. But just as an athlete, she's yeah. phenomenal. And I wanted to mention too, we, we talked a lot about the guards, but I thought Sam Jones really did well against Kayla Timmerman, yep. Hannah McGlone, and those powerful posts for Winona State because Sam had to play a lot of minutes and really did well. Yeah, and she did. I, I talked to her today about... You know, she didn't get any rebounds, mm -hmm. but she didn't give up any offensive rebounds. Right, yeah. And that was big. You know, you're going against a 6'3", Division One transfer. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's yeah. pretty big. She did. And like I said, everybody is coming together. Um, a lot of heart in, in these girls. Coach, last question for me. Uh, you know, we talked about this weekend. You got Crown and St. Ben's. St. Ben's will be a non-conference game. Is it... What do you? What's your feeling towards playing a conference opponent in a non-conference game? Is that a good thing? Is it? Is it kind of unfortunate? Uh, you know, what, what's your yeah, opinion? Yeah, it's it's not ideal. I mean, you'd like it to all count a little bit more. It still kind of counts. But uh, somebody dropped out of the tournament, and this is the best. And talk to our girls all the time. Next best action. What's the next best thing we can do? And this is the next best thing we can do. <laughs> and it will be good to be playing a good team. Yeah. Finally, Coach, have you talked with the team at all about goals or you know where you'd like to be at the end of the season? You know, again, going back to that Coach Wooden mm -hmm. quote of being the best that we can be yeah. and putting the most into it, that's our goal. But also our expectations are a little higher than I think other people's expectations okay. are. And we'll see how that develops. But I, I'm excited for this year. Yeah. All right, Coach, it's been great to have you on the Thank show and, uh, and good luck here the rest of the season. Thank you. Tune in for the Sports Buzz every Tuesday at 5.30 as a panel of local sports journalists tackle the hottest topics on everything from local high school and collegiate sports to regional discussion about the Twins, Brewers, Vikings, and Packers. With the Power Play Fantasy Football Challenge to the Rant of the Week and NFL Pick'em, the Sports Buzz is fast-paced and sure to entertain. That's new episodes of the Sports Buzz every Tuesday at 5.30 with replays only on HBC TV 25. 
Go beyond entertainment with HBC GigaWorld and get the broadband experience. Video chat without buffering. Stream your favorite shows and movies with TV to go. Dominate your online games and more with gigabit internet speeds. Watch over 300 video channels, including high definition, sports, HBO, Cinemax Stars Plus, Encore Showtime, and more. Call friends and family with reliable, crystal clear, unlimited local and domestic long distance phone service. Experience broadband the way it's meant to be with HBC GigaWorld. Visit HBCI.com to get started today. And we're back here on the Cardinals Nest on HBC TV 25. Dean Beckman, Donnie Netto, and Terry Manor joining us, the head coach from the women's hockey team. Terry, thanks for being back once again on the Cardinals Nest. Thanks and uh, yeah, your team now 3 2 and 1 in the conference, uh, tied for fifth place, 4 7 and 2 overall this year. So maybe give us uh, your impression of how the season has gone and, and how things have transpired here. You know, quite honestly, the season's gone just like I thought it was going to go. I mean, we've had some tough competition. Um, we lost a lot in the graduating seniors last year, so it's taken some time for some, some players to kind of mold into what they need to be. Um, right now, we've come to the point where I think they've realized what we need to, to do to be successful. Um, and quite honestly, I think we have the potential to be the best team that we've had in quite a long time. You know, Coach, you, you talk about the tough competition, and, and if you just look at last weekend mm -hmm. as, a, as a start, uh, you know, Lake Forest ranked number three in the country. Two very, very competitive games. You lost two to one in a game that, uh, you know, uh, Lake Forest scores late in the third period mm -hmm. to, to beat you guys, and then you lose four to two. Is it, is it I don't want to say easy, but are you able to take a lot of positives from a, a weekend like that? Most definitely able to take positives from it. Um, and again, you know, they were third ranked in the country at the time. Um, I know I have different feelings about the rankings, but they're, they're a very good team. and Obviously the best team we played to this point. Um, and we matched physically with them you know, every, every second of the way. Uh, the positives taken out of that was that we matched physically with them. It shows that individually we have the talent. The negatives can also be seen as a positive in the fact that we did not play that well as a team. We did not play that well uh, within the systems. So that can be seen as a positive in the fact that we didn't play our best game, and yet they were two very, very competitive games. So what are some of the areas you're seeing this year where you're doing maybe a little bit better than perhaps you expected and still some areas where uh, you need to, to get some improvement? Areas in which I think we're doing better is that we are playing more as a team. Uh, we're playing less as individuals, not people looking for the, the personal glory, looking for more as a team concept. Um, some of the negatives is that, again, with that, the positives, we're also still not playing that great as a team um, in the sense that our, our system work needs work. Um, you know, just understanding that it has to be done every, every shift. You know, as a, as a coach, Terry, and, and I'm not going to put you on the spot, but offensively you guys have, I, I don't want to say struggled, but, uh, you know, before – so the 4-2 loss, you'd gone three games with, with just scoring one or fewer goals. You got two goals against Lake Forest. As you prepare practices and whatnot, how do you try to to get into the the, the ladies trying mm. to create more trying offense? Trying to create more offense. I wish I knew. I honestly <laughs> wish I knew because it's, it's been something that we've been working on, quite honestly, for a few years. Um, you know, if you look at the women's game, a lot of times the bulk of the scoring comes from a couple players. Um, and right, and, that's, and that is quite honestly the case for, for us right now as well. I'd um, like to see it more evenly spread out, but we obviously work every day trying to improve our goal scoring, but at the same time, we need to embrace who we are. Uh, we're not a goal scoring team. Um, heading into last weekend, we were giving up uh, 1.91 1, 1 goals a game. We were scoring 1.91 goals a game. So we have to embrace that we are a very good defensive team, uh, but we just got to take advantage of those opportunities offensively when we have, when we have them. And what, what results from that, I think, and I was uh, kind of showed as I was looking at the statistics, is that you have a lot of close games, mm -hmm. and, and, and your team has to be mentally prepared and tough to yes. handle with all of those close games. Mm -hmm. Being as defensive-minded as you are, that, that's going to be a result. Uh, how do you feel they've, they've handled and sort of embraced though, that close game mentality? You know, I think that we've gotten better at it as the season gone on. Uh, we met yesterday and talked about a few things. We have game objectives. We have 10 different game objectives that we feel if we meet these, we're going to succeed. Um, and the four games that we've met, the bulk of those objectives, we won all four of them. Um, in the seven games where we've been in the middle point of those objectives, we've lost five, tied two, 
Now in those games, we've scored six goals, we've given up 13. So it's essentially a, a one goal game every game. So they've grown accustomed to, to playing those close games. It's just uh, what we have to figure out, what I have to figure out is how do we go from losing those one goal games to winning those one goal games. Sure. You know, we talked, and you mentioned uh, giving up 1.9 goals a game. Uh, Goaltending for you has been a luxury. You've got three outstanding goalies, Tori Herman, Mara Shields, and, and Ashley Corcoran. And I know we've talked uh, several times. The hard part for you is, is how do you get them on playing get them, time? Get them ice. Yeah, we've talked about it. Yeah, we have three fantastic goalies. Um, all good character kids. All have their own little you know, quirks about them and personalities. But as far as talent on the ice goes, I have absolutely no problem putting any one of them in, in the net. Um, and like you said, I mean, it's, the problem is finding them all ice time. And how about moving it up? Uh, you talk about your defensemen a little bit, and obviously they are led by by Mackie mm -hmm. Fatness and Katie Letourneau, two of the you know two of your veterans, two of your seniors. Uh, uh, defensively, you know it isn't just the goalie, but the, the, those defensemen have to be doing their job as well. Defensemen are definitely doing their job, and as you say, Katie and Mackie are our leaders. Um, and with that said, we've implemented um, in the last two years a new defensive zone system, which is more. You know, inclusive of all five of the skaters playing defense, which really helps out a lot. Uh, now, getting out of the zone is something else, but uh, <laughs> it helps us out a lot. How about offensively? Uh, the, I think the one, the person who's really kind of impressed me is Jamie Henderson. She's mm -hmm. really having a, you know, an outstanding. You're pretty much averaging a goal, or not a goal game, but a point a game. Point a game. Um, and then McKenna, McKenna Parent. And, you know, she's really kind of stepped into her own this year as a, as a senior and kind of really uh, offensively kind of. Charge, recharge yourself a little bit. Yeah. In both cases, um, and you speak of Mackie Fadness often, she'll give me some grief about this, but in both cases, maturity. Um, you know, Jamie only being a sophomore, um, last year physically came in and did very well, but didn't quite understand the college game. Uh, McKenna went three years in, in trying to play it one way. Uh, this year, she's really realized that it's what she needs to do more as a teammate and from that standpoint, she's excelled individually. Um, so it's, it's maturity, it's knowledge of the game. Mm -hmm. Terry, give us a little preview of this weekend uh, with St. Thomas. St. Thomas. <laughs> uh, early in the year, one of the players asked me, who do I enjoy beating the most? And I didn't answer. Um, yesterday, I answered to the team, and it, it is St. Thomas, the, the team I enjoy beating the most. Um, Player for player, they're probably the most skilled team in our conference. Um, I, I, I won't say probably, they are the most skilled team in our conference. Uh, I think they're ranked number four right now. Um, very good team. Um, quite honestly, I'm very confident going into this weekend. Um, I think we're ready for them. Um, I think quite honestly, we'll catch them off guard. Um, looking forward to it. How, how important is it, uh, it? It's interesting. Now, this is going to be the second week in a row for you that you played Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday, rather than Friday, Saturday. Does that make a difference at all? In certain ways, it does make a difference. Um, you know, one thing that we've changed this year is we've practiced um, on Sundays and taken Monday off uh, for various reasons. So I think that kind of will help us going into this weekend. But it's uncharacteristic to, to have games like Saturday, Sunday, and have them back-to-back. -back. Uh, doesn't often happen. And uh, you, we have a few seconds left. I don't know if you want to give a, a shout out to your son Ty, who had a, a goal last night in the, <laughs> in the Windhawks game. Is it hard for you not being able to see all of his games because of, of coaching? That's the hardest part about coaching. Um, you know, my son's probably played, I don't know, three, four hundred hockey games, and I've probably seen forty of them, fifty of them. Mm -hmm. um, I get updates from, from my wife, uh, but it's, it's, that's the most difficult thing. Uh, but it is exciting going home. I went home last night after practice and um, got to talk to him and just see the, the glimmer in his eye, you know, talking to me about the game. So, uh, Does he listen to advice from, from Dad? <laughs> <laughs> he very much listens to many things, but he's a typical teenager. He's not going to listen to everything. So. Uh, last thing, Terry, uh, Nathan Voller is going to be mm -hmm. putting Mackie Fadness in the student athlete spotlight in just a minute here. Uh, uh, what can you tell us about Mackie as one of her coaches? Oh, Mackie. <laughs> Mackie's that person that as a coach, you think she does no wrong. And the, her teammates always tell you, you're, you know, that's not the truth. Um, I used to always think Mackie was a quiet one. And every time I said something about it, the team was like, no, no, no. And, this year, Mackie's really come out of her shell. She's um, quick-witted, to say. Okay. Right. Um, doesn't often talk, but when she does, you know, um, 
at Gather something. Mm -hmm. And actually, with that said, Mac is a great leader. Uh, this year, beginning of the year, we, as a team, had a discussion about something. Started off very level-headed, and all of a sudden, sides started going back and forth. Mackie was very quiet, and all of a sudden, after a few minutes, Mackie just spoke up, said her opinion. Team was done. <laughs> team went with her opinion. So, all right, good. Mackie's great. Yep. All right, Terry Manor, head coach for the women's hockey team at St. Mary's. Thanks for being on the yep. show. Good Thanks luck this me. weekend against St. Thank Thomas you. and the rest of the season. Yep. Thank you. All right, Nathan Voller will put Mackie Fadness in the student athlete spotlight next here on HBC. Mackie Fadness is a senior defenseman from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And what's really neat about her is she's one of the team captains, so she's a really strong leader on the ice. But also, too, she's kind of a fun person to hang out with off the ice. And that's what I found out when I interviewed not only her, but also some of her fellow teammates as well. I decided to come to St. Mary's to play hockey. One of my friends from high school actually played in Eau Claire and then came to school here and played and she talked me into coming to school here. I think the teammates and the friends you make here is something unforgettable. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest things about playing hockey here. Well, pregame is kind of where we spend a lot of our time together playing different games. But over break so far, we've done different competitions with um, our team. We've kind of split up into two groups. Well, before games, we have pregame jams. So all the roommates will get together and we'll blast music and we'll try to get in the zone and get pumped up for our game that afternoon. Um, well, as a team, we usually come early anyway to play lightning in the rack, but Mackie and I like to come extra early, a lot earlier than other people. Um, it just gets us in the zone and I don't know, it's something that we share together, so. I would say Mackie's definitely the better player. She's always making the baskets and I'm not, so she most likely gets me out every time. We, we always see each other up in the calf. You know, anytime you go up there, you'll see someone on our team and usually sit with them. Um, one of the things we really like to do is eat Jack's pizza. Uh, it's probably one of our favorite things. Mackie likes cheese and I like pepperoni, so if we can get the half and half, that's usually our favorite, or else she'll just pick off the topping, so. Um, I have a few classes with teammates, but not many. Um, but I do live with, I have three other roommates and all three of them are on our team. So usually we'll see each other um, obviously every day and then have people over, so. Um, the last couple of years, especially like in the education program, um, we've always had classes together since our freshman year. So, and especially last year, I think we had almost every class together. So we see each other a lot like off the ice and on the ice. Um, yeah, being an education major, we get to go out into the field a lot. And so we get to go into like classrooms together and when we're practicing like teaching and stuff like that we get to practice in front of each other so it's kind of fun just like to be able to like see ourselves like on the ice like as hockey players and then off the ice as future teachers. I think both of us kind of like have those qualities of like feeling comfortable in front of people and being able to like lead so I think that both of us would like to coach in the future. Um, I would say the cap uh, C definitely fits her she's a very good leader and she's always enthusiastic and always inspiring others and um, I don't think I really see her making bad plays or anything. She's always making good plays that kind of inspire me to go out there and do my best too. Every day I learn from Mackie because we're both defensemen and so we play the same position. So constantly when we're at practice, I feel like I'm looking at her and I'm kind of seeing what she's doing and learning from her. And I just feel like she's really good at being a leader in the sense of knowing what she has to do on the ice to be successful. Honestly, Mac Mackie's just a really positive influence both at home and in the locker room. She's always in a good mood. She's a really fun person to talk to and a lot of the time we'll just joke around and we'll laugh a lot. Well, I wanted to play hockey and then when I came for my visit and saw campus, um, I came during the winter so no one was really around and I just got to see the team and when they're, they were here alone on campus, um, seeing the weight room and meeting all the people, it just seemed like a good fit for me. Well, it turns out Mackie is a really good leader for the Cardinal squad. Not only is she dominant on the ice, but she also likes to have a lot of fun off the ice as well. Even if that involves eating Jack's pizza and being really good at lightning. This has been Nathan Fuller reporting for the Cardinals Nest.